And good morning. We're back here on the Morning Gazette Radio Show. I'm Mike Kilbreth, and joining us by phone, he's getting ready for his uh, trial this morning, uh, Flint City Councilman Eric Mays. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, Eric, are you nervous about this morning at 930 in front of Judge Perry? Well, you're always concerned when you're going into the judicial system. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of just a natural thing to be a little nervous, a little concerned, a little humble. But, you know, you have to separate that from the aspect of representing yourself. So I'm going in as two people. I'm going in as the defendant and as the attorney. That's a juggling act. Now, did you check with the firm this morning to see if it was okay to talk on the radio? Well, um, you know, they say anybody represent themselves might not have the best representation. I don't know. If, I know for a fact nobody's put a gag order on me, so <laughs> I'm, well, I'm just staying the course. I haven't really talked since this thing started to the media, but, you know, you might kill breath. I, I've known you. You've got a radio show. You seem to be a decent person. So the attorney part of um, Councilman Mays said, I'll talk to you. Well, you know, speaking of attorneys, you had prominent Flint attorney Frank Manley. It's been said by some he's never lost a jury trial. Now, he suddenly, surprisingly withdrew from your case. Now, Tuesday, his firm showed back up, and I saw Frank in the court, and he sent one of his lawyers in. Arguing with the judge, they wanted back on the case, and uh, Eric Mays said no. Well, you know, Frank is a friend of mine, Manly and Mays, Mays and Manly. I mean, we still together in spirit. It's just a matter of um, sometimes Mays, you know, thinks he knows stuff, and at the end, he don't. Well, Eric, the, the principal aspect of Mays wanted to do this in principle. I see some false police reports. I see some withholding of evidence. And um, I'm trying to see how we can let this be known. Well, Eric, you, you argued in court Tuesday, and they wouldn't let you have all the witnesses you wanted. You've argued this is a, con a political conspiracy. You know, you, you were shot down on your hopes of getting these witnesses in, what, what do you make of Judge Perry doing that? Well, I preserve the record. Once you get bad rulings as it relates to Peter Bade, who was the prosecutor who levied the um, extra charges in order to try to make something stick and to try to get a resignation down there early, council people, you know, I think it was related because one of the council people hosted the party, so... You know, I preserve the record with objections. You always got appeals, but right now you move forward. Try to handle the case with what they um, give you to handle it with. So I'll go in there with half a defense and maybe half will be good enough. Half you, a victory. We'll see what happens. You mentioned and, and you kind of scolded the judge. And uh, the judge, when he was uh, releasing all the potential jurors after a jury was picked, he apologized to all these potential jurors, saying that uh, you weren't sophisticated, and you know he apologized for taking so long because you didn't know what you were doing, and you really ripped the judge. And uh, I think I've talked to several attorneys who say that's a that's a reason for appeal right there. Yeah, I call it what say I call it a reversible error. I think he's already prejudiced. Uh, jury because you don't say what takes so long if you had had Johnny Cochran them if he was still living jury selection sometime with professionals could go a day two three days so he shouldn't have said if this was attorneys and I don't know what I'm doing he should have really said nothing and you know let us get started without prejudicing the jury so I placed that objection on the record and it's appealable but right now in this courtroom we move on now, it's been said that Frank Manley and Johnny Cochran, you know, they're two, uh, they could be in the cousins, same class. They must be cousins. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. Would you Would you have said no to, would, would Johnny Cochran have been fired too? Well, I don't think um, Attorney Manley would have handled it or talked to me like the assistant did. Um, you know, I respect his assistant, but the assistant ain't Frank or Mike Manley to me, and I think me and the assistant had a personality conflict. Well, 
that was obvious in court. Obviously, uh, he mm-hmm. was arguing that he should be that the judge should let him back in the case and let the Manley firm back in. And the judge he went along with it until you protested along with help from the special prosecutor, Mike Gildner. Now, if I was Eric Mays, I'd be a little scared about this special prosecutor because he won all his motions, and uh, he's a good talker, Eric. Oh, yeah, and, you know, I'm just a guy that really don't know what I'm doing, so I don't know. You use the word nervous. I use the word humble. I use the word God. I use the word faith. I use the word honesty and truth. And I don't like to try cases in the media and the barbershop. We are finally fixing to get in the courtroom, and you take all of the morals and values, and you know the facts. When I say morals and values, truth and honesty, you try to show where police ain't always honest and truthful. Maybe 80% of them is, but I think we got some bad stuff going on here. And, you know, it's happening in the community in which I serve, and Sometimes you have to take a chance and shed the light on stuff, and um, you pray and hope it turns out okay. But, you know, you got haters in the community. I've seen people on Facebook call me a drunk. I'm not a drunk. It's an isolated incident. God's been in it, and so we'll see how it all turns out. Eric, do you believe you were drugged? Because you alluded to that in court uh, yesterday, or Tuesday, I mean. Do you believe you were drugged? Well, it's a possibility that, you know, some of the drinks given to me might have had something. Um, It's a possibility that tires could have been tampered with. You know, it's not what I believe, it's what the jury believe. And if they're not convinced on the prosecutor's story beyond a reasonable doubt, then they should come not guilty. But if they're convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that we didn't give fingerprints, we did, if they're convinced that... We didn't have insurance on the loan or car we had from Patsy Lou. They'll say guilty if they believe Patsy Lou had um, insurance. You know. Was there insurance on the car, Eric? Beg your pardon? Was there insurance on the car? Yeah, nobody asked for proof of insurance. We did give fingerprints. And uh, believe me, they towed that car up inside and out looking for stuff. One of the jurors say, they found a dead rat in one of the cars he had before from a dealership, a loaner. So I kept him on there because you can find all kind of stuff in cars. It was no marijuana on me. I hadn't smoked none, didn't have none. Well, Eric, you alluded to the fact that uh, one of your witnesses may testify that he was driving the car. Is that what's going to happen? Well, you might not incriminate himself. I can't say for sure what he will testify or what he won't testify to. Mm-hmm. But I've interviewed the witnesses. I've tried to get subpoenas to people. I even subpoenaed the police records looking for fingerprints yesterday. And, you know, Manly disappeared. Um, you know, the judge said I could sign subpoenas. We don't know who going on or what. If I tell the judge subpoenas and stuff ain't showed up, he might say, you proceed anyway. You should have a lawyer. So I don't know what's going to happen, uh, Mr. Kilbreath, and to your radio audience. I'm just going into that arena. And it's kind of like David and Goliath. It's kind of like, um, you know, them two that was in the burning furnace. You just hope God is with you. The truth come out, and we'll see what happens. Um, well, Eric, did they the did they offer? Now, you, it's been a lot of different reports that you've been offered a deal, and you've said no. Did they offer you a deal? That was deals offered that could amount it to a simple traffic ticket, and you you know you have to really contemplate that stuff because with all of the hoop line, the resignation to take a deal that kind of amounts to a traffic ticket and maybe some suspension and fines. You know, a lot of people around me are saying, take the deal, take the deal, take the deal, walk away from it. And, you know, I'm a little hard-headed, and sometimes I'm my worst person. It's just like they tell me, be quiet in council meeting, be quiet in council meeting. Scott Kincaid is going to get you arrested. Well, I think I have the right to talk. Well, you know, I was uh, a little uh, amazed at uh, the last council meeting on Monday night. 
City Council President Scott Kincaid ordered the police to come over and arrest you. And they tried to make you leave, tried to take you away, and you flat out told them no. You're a city councilman, and you told them to arrest Kincaid. They kind of called time out for 20 minutes and came back. Nobody got arrested. You're, well, you you're know, standing up to nervous. everybody. I was nervous then. I thought for sure I, was arrested. Nervous. I would be in jail <laughs> when I was trying to represent myself. Kincaid even said that the motion to recess that Neely and Juantez made was not in order, and I fought their fight. A motion to table a recess is in order, and the police were standing there, and he said, I'm not going out of that. So I wish that my colleagues would fight for me as I fight for them, but, you know, if I've got to be on an island by myself, I'll fight, and, you know, you're in a political war, but it takes away from the issues. We should be worried about lower water rates, creating jobs, um, we should be looking at issues like police and fire. All of that mess and politics and me being the center of attention, only if it gets solutions to water rates, police, fire, jobs, you know, I'm going to just keep pushing for the same issue. Solutions, not all this politics and mess and wrongdoing from some of the politicians. If people really detail what I'm talking about under Robert's rules and the opportunity to speak, um, I guarantee you, I know I'm 100% right. Nobody should be censored when they're an elected official. Now, Eric, there was quite an uprising on the lawn there in front of City Hall Monday about uh, the water rates. People are mad, not going to take it anymore. Uh, you've got a lot of support, a lot of pastors, a lot of prominent people peeking in at your uh, court proceedings. And not only this one, when you fought for the Genesee Towers uh, fiasco, you subpoenaed just about everybody that... Uh, could be subpoenaed that uh, who's who in Flint area politics. And, you know, you've taken on the establishment, but this drunk driving situation, you know, the media, the media reports drunk, alleged, alleged drunk, 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 drunk driving situation. You know, the media, they've kind of made Eric Mays the laughing stock around the community. People laughing about, yeah, that's the councilman had four flat tires drunk going the wrong way on the expressway. Eric, what do you, that's got to be embarrassing for you that this stuff is out there. So uh, clearing your name has got to be something you want to do, but firing oh, Frank Manley, say, firing oh, Frank Manley has got it. people saying, is he nuts? Why? Yeah. Is this a political, is it politics? Do you feel Frank didn't have your best interest at heart? All I can say is they said uh, four flat tires and I was trying to fix one. I've never tried to fix now. Nah, no not a one flat tire that was not true that's media but you know i'm famous for that i was in the club and one of the young people say maze i don't believe that i say well good for you he say but i'm gonna have to joke about it we're still down with you we support you we're down with you like four flat tires um i never was trying to fix any flat tire well eric were you driving or not well I don't have to testify. I don't have to take the stand. I was outside of the car. My help was ran off by the police. Nobody's talked about that. It will be an interesting trial. I hope the jury understands that the police didn't put in the police report. Nobody's talked about the other people who was around. And um, we'll let the um, trial take its course. I'll put people on the stand. We will try to let people know that some police um, don't tell the truth on their reports. And then we'll pray to God that the jury put this thing together. But, you know, I've been in jury trials. I know how people are. I know the makeup of the jury. I know the judge, how they pressure them. And, you know, Mike, believe me, I won't try this case on your show. And you might be have one of the most informative exclusives because when I gave the case to Manley, I said, talk to my attorney. Um, you called me. You was one of the first. The media talked a little bit. But I'm my own attorney, so I talk about what I like. But the trial will be starting probably now, what, in less than an hour, 9.30. And that's the proper venue in a dignified venue, at least I thought. But we already have objections on the record that might, you know, could cause a second trial. I see them already politicking. I felt like a council meeting. Um, 
in just Paris court the other day. People shutting me up, dogging me out, but, you know, you well, just Eric, move on. I, I got to ask you, there's some talk. I've talked to some pastors, and, uh, you know, there were some uh, in the hallway there at the tr- at the uh, proceedings Tuesday, and there's talk that uh, if they convict you, there could be a little uprising out on the lawn in front of the jail. Uh, you know, people going to bring you candy bars or something, I guess, if you get locked up, but... Uh, if they convict you, obviously you have a right to appeal. I mean, do you are you worried about heading to jail today? Man, who wants to really be in a jail for 90 days, 180 days, six months? You know, there's a fear that if you get um, convicted of a traffic ticket, some people get fines, I might get jail. You know, anything can happen. I've had surprises since I've been on the council. I had dreams of being a council person, but never with police standing by me, being removed from my seat, never with, you could only talk five minutes. You know, my dream of being a council person and helping the city and helping fix issues was not like this. So, you know, I've got a worst case scenario coming out of that courtroom. You hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. You pray and you hope. You know, anything can happen, Mike. Well, if you're just tuning in, uh, Eric Mays, Flint City Councilman, is our guest. He's got a trial about uh, 9.30 this morning. He's facing five misdemeanor charges between 90 and 93 days each, so he could get locked up for a long time. But uh, I'll tell you, Eric Mays, uh, he's he's fought the law, and the law hasn't won before. Eric Mays, uh, he, he's... Uh, a colorful figure. I think you've become probably the best-known name in all of Flint politics because you've been in the news. People are talking about Eric Mays. And, uh, you know, Eric, it, it seems to me you have the passion. Uh, you're representing the folks in the first ward. The most dangerous ward in Flint. One the of most, the most. The most dangerous city in America, per 2010, capita. 11, and 12 per capita. And, you know, Eric... Uh, you're making two hundred and ten dollars every other week as a Flint uh, City Councilman. Two sixteen. Two sixteen. Now Darnell Early, he's making one hundred and eighty grand. I'm About with you. This guy. Every two weeks. Yeah, I'm with you. This guy's not trying to fix this city because it'd mess up his check. Well, I tell you what, I've seen where we've got a twelve million dollar deficit. The general fund owes the sewer and water fund um, ten million. I see an opportunity right now. My colleagues voted eight to zero. I abstained on the sale of the pipeline. I abstained because they didn't do a thorough job. And so you could knock four million off of the ten million. I see money laying around everywhere to reduce the deficit and lower water rates and create jobs. But you know, my colleagues, man, they got other jobs. They in and out of there. If I was still working for General Motors, I should resign if I ain't got the time to do my job. I'm kind of disheartened and disappointed now that I'm on the inside and I can see stuff. I'm like, wow, wow, wow. But I feel sorry for the citizens because I'm trying to tell them something and people don't believe me. I'm being discredited at every turn. I take full responsibility for who I am and my personality. But, you know, I can't walk around like Jesus. I got some flaws, but I'm not a bad guy for those who know me. So you got people cheering for my demise and people supporting me for my success. I'm Eric Mays, the guy. Uh- I'll be over there this morning at 9.30, and uh, I think all the TV cameras were there last time. The Flint Journal was there. Uh, it's the most covered drunk driving trial in the history of Genesee County. There's no doubt about that. But good luck to you this morning, Eric. I know you got to get going because if you're late, they'll probably throw you in jail and throw away the key. Uh, we'll wish you luck this morning, and uh, hopefully we can talk uh, tomorrow maybe about uh, your freedom. Is that is that your hope? Well, I thank you for the opportunity to communicate and uh, say to you, Mike, based upon my way of knowing you, you know, I don't even talk to everybody. So to your audience and to the Mike Gilbert Show, regardless of Eric Mays, keep informing the people. God bless you. God bless the city of Flint. Thank you, Eric, and uh, we'll be following your trial. This is the Morning Gazette Radio Show, and we got to take a commercial break. We'll be back 
I know our phone lines are lit up there, but it uh, looks like most of them are dropping. It looks like they wanted to ask Eric questions.